Well, I promised everyone a sketch support behind the scenes video and here we are. I am very excited to share this whole sketch support process with you. I enjoy this part of it so much. Picking out the sketch, picking out the photos, the brainstorming and the planning. It's really a fun little process that I look forward to every month. And I feel like it's kind of a good little creative exercise as well. I definitely recommend that you yourself grab a sketch and see how far you can stretch it and use it in different ways. It can really open up some creative doors that maybe you didn't even realize you had in you. So we are starting at the very beginning with picking out the sketch. This month I know I am working with a one page sketch. Each month I alternate the size of the sketch. I enjoy creating one page layouts and two page layouts. So I like to have equal representation of both of them. Last month was a two page sketch. So it's time for a one page sketch this month. I have a little sketch vault on my computer where I have all of these sketches that are just waiting to be used. Usually there are about 10 to 15 sketches that are just ready to go. I make <laughs> sketches a lot. Uh, if I'm bored or don't have anything else I'm working on or if a creative idea just hits me, I make sketches. I don't really have a big process for picking out the sketch for the month. It all really just comes down to what I'm feeling at that current moment and it could change from day to day. One month I had a sketch that I loved and couldn't wait to use it and now at this point it's been like eight months ago and it's still not been the one that I have selected. I typically go with the one that I look at and immediately start getting ideas. These sketches in my little top secret vault are rough sketches at this point. They aren't the completed sketch that you all download from Scrapbook Generation. Usually I have the sketch on my computer right here in front of me for the next part, but I went ahead and printed it out to make this easier for you to all see this process. This is the sketch that I have selected for this month. I was really drawn to the strips with the stars at the end and thought that that area would be a lot of fun to play around with and adapt to different themes. So the first thing I do after I have selected a sketch is to have the first brainstorming session. I'm not even thinking about what pictures I might want to use yet. I'm just looking at the sketch and jotting down some ideas on how I can change up and adapt this sketch for different looks. I look at the photos first and I can see with this sketch that I could use one photo, maybe a four by six or even a five by seven. I could use smaller photos like four by three inch or three by three inch. I can rotate the sketch to use vertical photos. I could use maybe four uh, square photos and extend them to the left edge. I can add a third or maybe even a fourth photo and extend the photos to the top and bottom of the sketch. If I'm creating a two page layout, I would probably extend the photos this direction. I could also add a column of photos on one edge. It really depends on what photos I might select and how many there are. Then I look at the papers and think about what I can do with those. I also consider potential themes that would be fun to play around with when using this particular sketch. I can change the stars to other shapes to fit whatever theme I'm working with. I could use a large shape in place of this background piece. I could remove the background piece and just focus on the photos and the strips with the stars. If I rotate the sketch, I could turn these strips and stars into something themed that would go up. 
like flowers with stems, birthday candles, or buildings or houses. If I rotate the sketch the other way and the strips are going down, I could have falling snowflakes or leaves or spiders dropping down for a Halloween layout. This initial brainstorming process with the sketch is to help make picking out the photos a little easier. Now that I have a good idea of different things I can potentially do with this sketch, I start going through my pictures while keeping these variations in mind. I usually type up the variation so that I have a list nearby as I go through my photos. These are the boxes that I talk about a lot in my videos. These boxes are full of photos that are ready to go. This box is full of my bulk printed photos. I will print a large amount of photos all at one time so that I can easily grab a set of photos and start creating right away. There's a variety of photo sizes throughout this box. I tend to have a few favorite sizes that I enjoy working with. Typically, I will look at the amount of photos and what is going on in the photos and then decide without a layout design in mind what size I want to print that photo or group of photos in. For example, if I have two photos from one event or moment, I know that I'm going to be creating a one page layout. My go-to sizes for a two photo, one page layout are three by three inch, four by four inch, two and a half by three and a half inch, three by four inch, or three by five inch. A big deciding factor is what is going on in the pictures. Some photos work better as a square and some don't. So I look at things like that to make a final choice when I'm editing. The second box is actually full of photos that I have left over from layouts I've already completed. Long ago, I used to print a lot of wallet size photos and they always came with two. So I have a lot of these left over since I only needed one for the layout I was creating. I still use them even though they are already on other layouts. Many times there's more than one story to tell from one set of photos. Plus for me, scrapbooking is just as much about the creative outlet and my enjoyment as it is about documenting memories. So I have no problem creating multiple layouts with some of the same photos from previous layouts. Since I've already done a little bit of brainstorming, I have somewhat of an idea of the photos that I might want to use with this sketch. As I go through these photos, I'm looking for photos that might fit some of the ideas I wrote, but I'm also keeping an open mind just in case an idea sparks from looking through these photos. Sometimes I stumble across a photo or set of photos that bring on a whole new idea for the sketch. As I flip through the photos, I pull out the ones that I think might work. I'm not trying to only find five sets of photos at this moment. I'll worry about narrowing things down later. This part of the process is one that I really wanted to share with you all. Almost every layout for sketch support is created through this process of going through photos I have already printed. There was a comment one week from a very nice woman who said, it's hard to believe that you don't print these photos to work with the sketch. Your photos always seem to fit the sketch so perfectly. And my response was, they seem to fit the sketch perfectly because I adapt the sketch to work with the photos. I make the sketch work for me and my photos. Now, sometimes I will print special photos for the sketches. Occasionally, if I have a really different idea that requires an enlarged photo or a special type of photo, or sometimes I have a theme idea that I really want to work with, but I don't have the right photos, then I will have them printed specifically for the sketch. But that really doesn't happen a lot. The majority of the photos I have selected from the photos that I have on hand, and I make the sketch work with those photos. And you can do this with any sketch. Trust me, you can make any sketch work with almost any set of photos. 
I know watching me pull photos out of a box isn't all that exciting to watch, but I wanted to share my thoughts on each set of photos I am pulling out so you can get an idea of where my thought process is during this photo selection time. The first set of photos I pull out are of Jackson blowing out the candles on his birthday cake. All of the photos in this set are three by five inch and I was thinking back to rotating the sketch and using the strips for birthday candles. If I rotate the sketch, the vertical three by five inch photos would be a perfect fit. There are enough photos that I would create a two page layout with these. These two photos are of my kids at the Scholastic Book Fair at their school. I don't have a big spark of an idea for the theme to work with this sketch. I pulled these out because the photo size and amount of photos perfectly matched the sketch. Next, I have four four by six inch photos of our German Shepherd, and I was thinking this set would be great for a two page layout. I could pretty much follow the same design of the sketch, but extend the photos to fit two pages. This set is four three and a half by two and a half inch photos of my son and his cat. I liked the idea of using more than just two photos on the sketch. I was thinking about the option where you add two more photos above and below the photos on the sketch. I also loved the idea of rotating the sketch with the strips going down and adding some spiders dropping down from a spider web. So I thought maybe these pumpkin carving photos might work for that. I was in the mood to do some stitching and maybe put together a stitched spider web or something like that. I really love this photo of my son blowing bubbles and instantly thought about replacing those stars with circles and somehow creating bubbles. It's a vertical four by six inch photo, so it would replace the two five by three inch photos without needing to make major adjustments. So it would work really well with the sketch. I'm always drawn to beach and water photos. So anytime I have those types of photos that might work with the sketch, I'll pull them out for consideration. I was thinking that maybe those strips and stars could work as wave or splashes. And there's probably a good chance that I'm going to end up pulling several water photos and finding one that will work. I love creating water themed layouts. So I almost always find a way to make the sketch work with that theme. This set of photos has four six by four inch photos. And I thought that I could either arrange them all the way across a two page layout in a single line or extend the same photo arrangement with two photos above and below each other onto a second page and keep the general design of the sketch the same. Maybe even extend the strips past the photos on the other side. The story with these photos has to do with jellyfish. So I thought that might make for a fun theme to play with. This is another set of two five by three inch photos. I don't really have a big plan in mind for them, but they fit the photos on the sketch. So I go ahead and pull them out. I have another little brainstorming session after I've pulled out photo options. So I'm thinking maybe an idea will spark for those photos at that point. With these three, three and a half by two and a half inch photos, I thought they could be either arranged in a column together or I could overlap them to cover close to the same photo area on the sketch. As far as theme goes, I was thinking that I could use hearts and paw prints in place of the stars. These are two six by four inch photos that I thought would fit well with the sketch. A six by four inch photo is only an inch bigger, both width and height than the five by three inch photos on the sketch. So that size would be very easy to work with for this sketch. The pictures are of my youngest son playing in the dirt during his t-ball game. I don't have a big idea for the theme just yet with this one. Of course, I'm pulling out more water and beach photos. I'm determined to work some waves and splashes into the sketch. So it's probably a done deal that I'm going to make this happen one way or another. I just don't know which picture or set of pictures I'm going to use. Both of these are four by six, so they could easily work into the sketch. This set of photos are of my youngest pointing up to the sky because an airplane was flying over our house. I thought that maybe I could use some fun directional strips or stitching and have airplanes at the ends of them instead of the stars. 
This is a set of three three by three inch photos of my son singing in the kitchen. Instantly, I thought it might be fun to create large wavy lines of music and use lots of music notes in place of the stars. I could arrange the photos in one strip or overlap and layer them together. For these photos, I have three two and a half by three and a half inch photos. And since they are of my son hanging from a tree branch, I thought maybe I could do something with tree branches in place of the strips with leaves instead of stars. These are two three by four inch photos of Drew hitting golf balls. So I thought about having strips with circles and golf balls throughout instead of the stars. I could tilt and overlap the two photos together and they would cover close to the same general area as the photos on the sketch. So I wouldn't have to make too many adjustments for these photos to work. And of course I am selecting more water pictures. I told you guys, I am determined to work with a water theme with this one. These are actually two five by three inch photos so they would fit the sketch perfectly. This set has four three by three inch photos, which could work really well in place of the five by three inch photos. I was thinking of just going classic boy theme with these photos and how well that would fit with the stars. I was also thinking that these photos might work well with a large star background since I would probably stick with that star theme throughout. I have another set of water pictures. This one has six four by six inch photos of my son jumping into the pool. I was thinking that these would work perfectly for a two page layout and I could tie in some waves and splashes for the strips and stars. Splashes would work really well since there is actual splashing in the pictures. This is another set of photos with someone blowing out candles. There are enough here that they would be used on a two page layout. I'm thinking I could rotate and create birthday candles across the top of the photos. This set actually has two different sets of photos in two different sizes. I I think I had five photos and typically when I have five photos, I will print them in sizes that I would use for a two page layout. Here I have printed them in four by six inch, but for some random reason, I thought that maybe it would be fun to also print them in a small size and use them on a one page layout. So I also printed the five photos in two by four inch. I don't use that size often, but I thought it might be something different to kind of play around with. Theme wise, I pulled these photos because I really liked the idea of rotating the sketch and turning the strips and stars into balloons floating above the photos. For the next set of photos, I have several different sizes and I'm not sure how I would work the photo sizes to fit the sketch just yet, but I thought that maybe a kite flying theme would work well with this sketch. There are enough photos that these would be used for a two page layout. So now I'm done pulling out photos. If I pull out a lot of photos from the first box and I feel like I've got a really good set of photos pulled, I usually won't go through the second box of leftover photos. And it looks like I've got a ton of photos here to choose from, so I don't feel like I need to look any further. I have tons of ideas for the photos here, so I'm completely satisfied with what I've got. Now comes one of the harder parts of this process, and that is narrowing down this giant pile of photos to just five sets of photos for the five layouts that I will create for sketch support. I've got quite a few photos that I'm gonna have to eliminate. At this point, I do have a few favorites, but I wanna run through them all just to see if any more ideas are inspired. One of the first things I will do is separate which photos will work for a one page layout and which photos would work for a two page layout. I'm just trying to get things organized to make this next brainstorming session a little easier. To help get my thoughts organized, I use a notebook and jot down my ideas for the final five photo choices and how I might make the sketch work with them. I start by making a list and creating some space for each layout and the ideas that I might have to work with that particular set of photos. Since I'm only creating one two page layout, I have to be a little more cutthroat when it comes to eliminating these photos. In a way, it's a little easier to select these because there can only be one. 
I'll look through the photos and see if any ideas are really speaking to me and considering how I might adapt the sketch to work with that particular set of photos. It's just like choosing the sketch. It all comes down to what sparks an idea that I'm excited to create. The ones that don't are eliminated pretty quickly. And sometimes it's not that a set of photos doesn't spark an idea, it's just that another set of photos sparked a bigger idea or a plan that I'm more excited about creating. I knew with the two page layout, the ones that sparked the biggest ideas were the photos with Jackson blowing out his candles and the water photos. I had two sets of birthday candle photos, so to further narrow down and eliminate, I had to choose between one set that had vertical photos and one that had horizontal photos. I liked the set of vertical photos just a little better for the two page version of this sketch, so I eliminated the horizontal set. I loved the idea of balloons, but I had a set of the same photos that would work for a one page layout. So I eliminated the four by six version of the photos pretty quick. I thought the balloon idea might work a little better for a one page layout. I liked the kite photos, but honestly, I've had an idea for these photos from the day I had them printed. And while I do think they could go with this sketch, I just can't seem to shake that other idea I had for these photos and the kite theme. So I decided to eliminate them. Now I'm down to three sets. It's either going to be waves and splashes or birthday candles. The idea that had me most excited was possibly using this set of photos of Jackson jumping into the pool. I was thinking about rotating the sketch and creating waves on the layout and creating big splashes to go with the splash in the photos. So now that I've got my two page layout photos decided on, I jot down some of the ideas that I want to incorporate into my layout. For this layout, I note that the four by six inch photos will go across the layout, that I will rotate the sketch and then create big splashes coming up from the bottom below the photos. So we have one down and four to go. The first thing I'm going to do with this set of photos is go through them all and do a first run elimination. This is getting rid of the photos that aren't creating that big spark with me and seeing where I stand with the remaining photos. Right now I have three piles that the photos are organized into. The elimination pile, the maybe pile, and the pile of my favorites. The water photos are pretty easy to get rid of at this point because I've already got a water themed layout planned and so the odds of me doing another are pretty slim. I like to play around with different themes to really show how you can adapt the sketches to fit anything. And so I don't typically double up on a theme for sketch support. I also don't like to double up on photo sizes or amount of photos. So that goes into consideration as well. If I select to use a single four by six inch photo for one layout, I'm not going to select a single four by six inch photo for another layout. The point of sketch support is to show you how to adapt the sketches to different elements. So I don't like to repeat the same elements on different layouts. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen. I just try to avoid it as much as possible. So now I've eliminated a few and I've got my favorites and the maybe pile is still here for backup just in case a favorite ends up becoming eliminated. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes that does happen. I start going through my favorites to see if there are any that I am 100% sure that I want to use. The bubbles photo was probably the one I was the most sure of out of all the photos the second I pulled it out of that box. I liked the idea of showing that you can easily adapt the sketch to use one photo in place of two. Plus the four by six inch size fits perfectly and I loved the idea of using circles with the sketch. I was having a tough time with the remaining favorites. I almost considered creating an extra layout because I was a little stuck for a moment, but time just wasn't going to allow it this month. So I was going to have to just suck it up and make a choice. Sometimes in this process, you have to just go for it, make a choice and trust that you can make it work. 
Next, I selected the singing photos. I really loved that idea of having wavy music and music notes. I also liked that there were three smaller photos. The idea I had for this layout was one that I was really excited to play around with. So these photos were definitely ones I couldn't pass up. My next choice is Jackson making silly faces. I knew I wanted to keep the star theme with these, and I also knew that I wanted to show that you can substitute a large shape for that background, and I thought a star would be a fun shape for that. I really love working with stars, so I was excited about this one. Plus, the four photos would work well and in a similar fashion to how the photos on the sketch already are. My last choice ended up being the balloon pictures. I really, really wanted to make my balloon idea a reality, so it ended up being a much easier choice to make over the airplane photos than it was in the beginning of this elimination process. Maybe at a later date, I'll go back and use that airplane idea. So now I have five sets of completely different photos picked out to work with this one sketch. We've got a four by six inch photo with bubbles. There's three three by three inch photos with music notes. Then there's four three by three inch photos to use with stars. Five two by four inch photos and some balloons. And finally, six four by six inch photos for a two page layout with splashes. Through this second brainstorming session and photo elimination process, I've got a rough plan down and we are one step closer to creating the layouts with this sketch. Now it's time to pick out the papers to go with these photos. I'm not gonna show you the process of going through the papers because I'm afraid it would be terribly boring to watch, but I thought instead I would show you the papers I selected and explain why I selected them. For the first layout, I decided that this Boys Rule collection from Crate Paper would be perfect. This is one of my favorite boy collections and I've used it several times now. Seeing the photo on top of this ticket paper, you can probably see why I selected it. The different colors and the papers are very complementary to this photo. There's the green that matches the shirt and the reddish orange that matches Drew's hair. And then I kind of felt like the golden tone in the photo matches well with the remaining photos in the collection. Then I added in some extra papers that I thought I might want to work in there. I really like the black and white stripe and this wood paper. And then I have this green paper that matches his shirt really well. For embellishments, I'm thinking about experimenting with making bubbles. I'm not sure yet on how I'll do that. I'm kind of toying around with the idea of using Nuvo Drops in some way to make them, but I'm really gonna have to get in there and just start experimenting and see what comes out of it. But I do think it's really gonna be a fun layout to create. With the second set of photos, I have a lot of open options for paper selection because the photos are mostly neutral. He's got black and gray clothes on and then the background is light and tan, so that really leaves the door open for using whatever combo I'm feeling. In my head, I'm envisioning using wavy lines of music in place of the strips on the sketch. I was thinking that those pieces would maybe be out of black cardstock, and I wanted to add a very boyish feel to the layout. So I decided to go with a grungy style of papers. I loved this collection from American Crafts and how it mixes these fun, bold colors with a grungy grungy style. I don't have a whole lot of this paper, so I used what I do have to help me pull coordinating papers that will work with this look. Odds are I'm not going to use all of them, but I like having my options close by. I may start a layout with an idea in mind, and sometimes the end result is not even close to what that idea was. 
For the third layout, I've got these photos of Jackson making faces, and there really is a lot of different colors going on. Honestly, I thought it was going to be really difficult to find papers for these photos, and it ended up being really easy. This field trip collection from American Crafts was spot on perfect for these photos. You can see that the dark blue matches the dark blue in his shirt. And then there's the Under Armour logo on his shirt. And it's kind of this greenish yellow and it is a perfect match to this paper. Then throughout the collection, there are a lot of fun, bright, bold colors. I'm not always looking for a perfect match of color to my photos all the time, but I do like to use colors from my photos as a guide for what colors I might be looking for. I like my papers and photos to work together to complement each other, not compete against each other. I'm thinking about creating a large star background and then keeping the strips and stars on the sketch. And I think these papers are going to be so much fun to work with, with the design I have in mind. I'm really excited to see how this one turns out. I really lucked out on my fourth set of photos because the It's Your Birthday collection from Echo Park coordinates with these photos so well. All of the main colors in my photos, the red and orange shirt, the light and dark blue and the green and the balloons, all of those colors are in this paper collection. Then it's an added bonus that it's a birthday collection and I'm creating a birthday layout. I love it when the collection theme and colors fit with my photo theme and colors. For this layout, I'm thinking about rotating the sketch so that the strips go up. I'm planning on replacing those strips with balloons. I haven't yet figured out how I'm going to create the balloons, but the general idea is in place and I can't wait to work on it. I think this is gonna be a fun one. This set is going to be for my two page layout. I'm thinking again about rotating the sketch, but this time in the other direction. Since the photos are of Jackson jumping into the pool, I'm thinking about this big splash design along the bottom in place of the strips and stars. I've got this image in my head that I'm so excited about and I really hope that it comes together the way I want it to because I think it's going to be really cool. I've picked out mainly blue papers to try and match the blue in the water. Water photos can be so hard to pick out papers for because of the many different shades of blue. It can be such a hard color to match. A little trick I like to do is to use multiple shades of blue to help hide the fact that the blues might not be an exact match to the photos. So I selected a ton of different blue papers. In the end, I might just use one or two, or I might even end up using all of them. I really don't know at this point, and I won't know until I get in there and start playing around with the design that I wanna do. To add some more color to the layout, I thought I might add in this stripe and then I selected a few papers that would coordinate with that stripe. So now the only thing left to do is go create these layouts. I hope you all enjoyed this little behind the scenes process of how sketch support comes together each month. If you want to see the finished result of all of these layouts, be sure to check out Sketch Support Episode 7. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.